a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Incredibles 2 Incredibles 2 is a 2018 American computer animated film produced by Pixar and released by Walt Disney Pictures. Written and directed by Brad Bird, it is the sequel to The Incredibles, and the second installment of the franchise. The story follows the Parr family as they try to restore public's trust in superheroes while balancing their family life, only to combat a new foe who seeks to turn the populace against all superheroes. Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, Sarah Vowell and Samuel L. Jackson reprise their roles from the first film. Newcomers to the cast include Huckleberry Milner, Bob Odenkirk, Catherine Keener, and Jonathan Banks. Michael Giacchino returned to compose the score. Following the success of The Incredibles, Bird postponed development on a sequel to work on other films. He attempted to distinguish the script from superhero films and superhero television series released since the first film, focusing on the family dynamic rather than the superhero genre. Incredibles 2 premiered in Los Angeles on June 5, 2018, and was theatrically released in the United States on June 15, 2018, in Disney Digital 3D, Dolby Cinema and IMAX. It received largely positive reviews. Critics praised its animation, voice acting, humor, action, and score, although some criticized the plot as derivative of the original. The film made $182.7 million in its opening weekend, setting the record for best debut for an animated film, and has grossed over $1.2 billion worldwide, making it the fourth highest grossing film of 2018. The second highest grossing animated film and the 16th highest grossing film of all time. Plot The Pars, a family of superheroes, pursue the Underminer. Although he robs the Metroville Bank and escapes, they stop his drill tank from destroying City Hall with help from Lucius Best. However, the government, concerned by the collateral damage, shuts down the superhero relocation program leaving the Pars without financial assistance from Agent Rip Dicker. As Violet State, Tony, discovered her superhero identity during the Underminer attack, Dicker erases her from his memory. That night, Lucius informs Bob and Helen of an offer from Winston Dever, the owner of DevTech, a telecommunications corporation. Winston and his sister Reveling propose a publicity stunt to regain public trust in superheroes. Winston chooses Helen to spearhead the stunt under her old identity, Elastigirl, as she causes less property damage, and provides the Parr family with a new home. While Helen is away, Bob struggles with his new role as a stay-at-home parent, Dash has trouble with math, Violet becomes withdrawn after Tony stands her up, and Jack-Jack wreaks havoc with his burgeoning superpowers. Bob brings Jack-Jack to Edna Mode, who develops a suit to control his abilities. Meanwhile, Elastigirl confronts and captures the screen slaver, a supervillain who projects hypnotic images using television screens. She unmasks him as a delivery man with no recollection of his actions. At a party celebrating the screen slaver's arrest, Winston announces a summit of world leaders to legalize superheroes to be hosted aboard his luxury ship. Unsettled by the ease with which he captured the screen slaver, Elastigirl realizes that he was being controlled by a pair of mind control goggles. Evelyn forces the goggles onto her, revealing herself as the mastermind behind the screen slaver. Evelyn explains she has hated superheroes since Gazabeam and Pharonic failed to rescue her father from being killed by burglars. She plans to sabotage her brother's summit and cause a catastrophe that will tarnish the reputation of superheroes. Using a hypnotized Elastigirl, she lures Mr. Incredible into a trap, then sends other hypnotized superheroes to subdue the part children. Frozen tries to protect them, but is overwhelmed and placed under Evelyn's control as well. Violet, Dash, and Jack-Jack escape with the help of the Incredible, a high-tech car once owned by Bob during his time as Mr. Incredible, and reach Winston's ship. On board, the hypnotized Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl, and Frozen recite a vindictive manifesto on air to paint superheroes as a threat. They subdue the crew, aim the ship at Municiburg, and destroy the controls. Jack-Jack removes Elastigirl's goggles, who frees Mr. Incredible and Frozone. 
The Pars and Frozone release the other mind-controlled superheroes by destroying their goggles, with Mr. Incredible swimming underwater to turn the rudder and Frozone creating layers of ice. They slow the ship and prevent it from crashing into the city. Evelyn escapes in a jet, but is captured by Elastigirl. Superheroes around the world regain legal status. Later, Tony accompanies Violet and her family to a movie. Outside the theater, the Pars spot a high-speed pursuit between police and gunmen. Violet leaves Tony at the theater and promises to return in time for the film, before the Pars give chase in a refurbished Incredimobile. Development Following The Incredibles, Brad Bird directed his next film for Pixar, Ratatouille, which was released in June 2007. Near its premiere, Bird said he was open to an idea of a sequel to The Incredibles, but only if it could be better than the original. He stated, I have pieces that I think are good, but I don't have them all together. In a May 2013 interview, Bird reiterated his interest in a sequel, I have been thinking about it. People think that I have not been, but I have, because I love those characters, and love that world. I have many, many elements that I think would work really well in another Incredibles film, and if I can get them to click all together, I would probably want to do that. While publicizing the first film, Bird had already conceptualized the eventual approach where Bob and Helen would switch roles, and Jack-Jack would develop multiple powers unknown to the family. At the Disney shareholder meeting in March 2014, Disney CEO and Chairman Bob Iger confirmed that Pixar was working on an incredible sequel, and that Bird would return as writer. Bird started the script around April 2015, and said that the incredible sequel would be his next film after Tomorrowland. One challenge in writing Incredibles 2 was how to deal with the large number of superhero films and television series that had been released since the first film, such as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To try to differentiate the sequel, Bird wanted to avoid tropes related to the superhero genre. I don't think that kind of idea stays interesting for very long. For me, the interesting thing was never the superhero part of it. It was more the family dynamic, and how do superhero things play into that. He said he wanted to include some unused ideas from the first film, and that the new story would focus on Helen Parr, Elastigirl. Though the sequel was released 14 years after the first, Bird did not want to use a narrative element like a time skip or to come up with new characters, and instead continued from where the first film left off. This allowed him to keep characters with the same superpowers and not have to develop new ones, nor did he need to figure out how to deal with Violet and Dash being adults. This also allowed him to keep Jack-Jack as an infant with an array of powers, which Bird likened to how infants are able to understand numerous languages. While the plot of the 2005 follow-up video game to The Incredibles, The Incredibles, Rise of the Underminer, begins at that same point of time, the film discards the game's continuity. The film was produced with a production budget of $200 million. One advantage that Pixar had with Incredibles 2 was the advancement of technology the company had seen since the original film and a team of much more experienced animators. Producer John Walker said, I think that one of the things that excited Brad and Ralph Eggleston, the production designer, was the fact that the technology existed now to finally realize the designs in the way that they had hoped to realize them in 2004. There were no notions of, well, we don't know how to do long hair, we don't know how to do humans, we don't know how to do muscles. Everybody knows how to do it. It's just now about doing it quickly. Because Pixar no longer used the same systems from the first movie. All the characters had to be created from scratch on the computer again. The studio also used physically based human eye models for the characters for the first time, even if the eyes are larger and more stylized than in real humans. Casting Pixar announced in November 2016 that both Holly Hunter and Samuel L. Jackson would return to reprise their roles, and at the July 2017 D23 Expo that both Craig T. Nelson and Sarah Val would also return with them. Spencer Fox, the original voice of Dashiel, Dash, Pa, was replaced in the sequel by younger newcomer Huckleberry Milner. Also that July, Brad Bird and John Ratzenberger were confirmed as reprising their characters from the first film.
In November 2017, Pixar announced that Bob Odenkirk and Catherine Keener had been signed to the cast. In January 2018, it was announced that Sophia Bush and Isabella Rossellini would voice new characters Void and the Ambassador, while Jonathan Banks would voice Rick Dicker after the character's original voice actor Bud Lucky retired in 2014. After his death in 2018, the film was dedicated to Lucky's memory. Music in 2015, Bird confirmed that Michael Giacchino would return to compose the score. Giacchino began work around May 2017. The soundtrack album was released on June 15, 2018. In addition to the film's score, it includes the vocalized theme songs for Mr. Incredible, Frozone, and Elastigirl heard in the credits, as well as bonus versions of the song sung by Disney's a cappella group, T Capella, and the latter's version of the track. The Glory Days, from the first film. Release The official premiere of Incredibles 2 took place in Los Angeles on June 5, 2018. It was theatrically released in the United States on June 15, 2018, including an IMAX release as part of Disney's new distribution deal with IMAX, but only in 2D. It is accompanied by Pixar short film Bow. The film's release was originally scheduled for June 21, 2019, but the date was moved forward after Pixar handed the 2019 release date over to Toy Story 4, after its production fell behind schedule. Marketing A 53 seconds teaser trailer premiered on November 18, 2017 during ESPN's broadcast of College Game Day. It received 113 million views in its first 24 hours, becoming the most viewed trailer for an animated film, and the seventh most viewed trailer overall. A new sneak peek premiered during the 2018 Winter Olympics on February 14. On April 13, a new trailer was released. Merchandise An Incredibles 2 graphic novel and comic miniseries was published by Dark Horse Comics in 2018. The graphic novel, titled Incredibles 2, Heroes at Home, was written by Liz Marsham and illustrated by Nicoletta Baldieri. A comic miniseries, titled Incredibles 2, Crisis in Midlife, and other stories, was written by Christos Gage and Landry Walker, and illustrated by Guri Hiru, Jay Bone, Andrea Greppi, and Roberta Zainotta. In May 2018, a prose novel was released entitled Incredibles 2, a real stretch, an Elastigirl prequel story, which focuses on the life of the character Elastigirl before the events of the first film. A Lego video game adaptation of both films was released on the same day as Incredibles 2. Box Office Incredibles 2 has grossed $607.3 million in the United States and Canada, and $614.2 million in other territories for a total worldwide gross of $1.222 billion. On July 1, 2018, the film passed $648 million at the worldwide box office, surpassing the $633 million the original film made in its entire theatrical run. It is currently the ninth highest grossing film of all time domestically, and the highest grossing animated film domestically. The film crossed the $1 billion mark on July 30, 2018, becoming the seventh animated film and the 36th film of all time to reach the milestone. It was also the fifth animated Disney film, the third Pixar film, and Disney's 18th film overall to gross $1 billion worldwide, as well as the fastest animated film to gross $1 billion, doing so in 46 days, surpassing Minions. On August 12th, the film surpassed Toy Story 3 to become the highest-grossing Pixar film worldwide. United States and Canada In April 2018, early box office projections had Incredibles 2 grossing $110 million in its opening weekend in the United States and Canada. In May 2018, a month before the film's release, tracking revised to an opening weekend of $140 million or more. A week prior to the film's opening, Fandango reported that pre-sale of tickets for the film had exceeded that of previous mid-year blockbusters Finding Dory, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Homecoming and Suicide Squad at the same point in their release cycles. By the week of its release, opening weekend projections had reached upwards of $150 million.
A day before release, it became Fandango's top pre-selling animated film of all time, outselling the previous record holder, Finding Dory. The film grossed $18.5 million from Thursday night previews, increasing weekend projections to as high as $174 million. The previews set the record for an animated film, doubling Finding Dory's $9.2 million, and were higher than the likes of fellow superhero films Spider-Man, Homecoming, Thor, Ragnarok and Justice League. It made $71.6 million on its first day, including previews, the best ever for an animated film, and 14th highest all-time. It went on to debut to $182.7 million, the eighth best opening of all time, far ahead of Finding Dory's animated record of $135.1 million, and more than the entire lifetime gross of Pixar A Bug's Life, Cars 3 and The Good Dinosaur. The film set animated records for its Monday and Tuesday grosses, making $23.9 million and $27.1 million, respectively. Its Tuesday gross also set a June record, topping Jurassic World. By Thursday, its seventh day of release, the film had grossed $269.4 million, topping the entire lifetime domestic gross of the original, not accounting for inflation. In its second weekend the film dropped 56% to $80.9 million, finishing second behind newcomer Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, marking the first time two films opened to over $100 million in back-to-back -back weekends. It remained in second place in its third and fourth weekends, grossing $45.5 million and $29 million, respectively. On July 7, its 23rd day of release, the film crossed $495 million, passing Finding Dory to become the highest-grossing animated film and Pixar highest-grossing film of all time domestically. And the following day became the first animated film to gross over $500 million domestically. On September 2, its 80th day of release, it became the first animated film to gross over $600 million domestically. Internationally Outside North America, the film made $51.5 million from 25 countries in its opening weekend, for a global debut of $231.5 million. Mexico was the largest debut with $12.3 million, followed by Australia and Russia. In its second weekend of release the film made $58.6 million from 28 countries, bringing its two-week total to $134.7 million. Its largest market was China where it made $21.2 million, the best ever opening for a Pixar film in the country. It was also released in India where it made $3.3 million. In the United Kingdom, the film grossed $12.6 million in its opening weekend, the second biggest opening for Pixar after Toy Story 3. As of September 9, 2018, the biggest markets in terms of total earnings are the United Kingdom, followed by China, Japan, France, and Brazil. Critical Response On review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 94% based on 301 reviews, with an average rating of 7. 9 tenths. The website's critical consensus reads, Incredibles 2 reunites Pixar family crime-fighting team for a long-awaited follow-up that may not quite live up to the original, but comes close enough to earn its name. On Metacritic, which assigns a normalized rating to reviews, the film has a weighted average score of 80 out of 100, based on 51 critics, indicating generally favorable reviews. Audiences polled by Cinema Score gave the film a rare grade of A on an A to F scale, the same score as the first film, while post track reported film goers gave it a 93% overall positive score and an 83% definite recommend. Robert Abiel of The Rap praised the film, saying, Whatever the opposite of phoning in a sequel is, that's Brad Bird's progressive minded, thunderously fun mix of super saves, throwback aesthetics, and family comedy. A. A. Dowd, writing for The AV Club, felt it was a sparkling contraption of an animated comedy, funny, and often wondrous in its mid century modern vision of an alternate America frozen in the amber of a bygone idealism. David Ehrlich of IndieWire gave the film a B.
saying, when the pars are pushed out of their comfort zone, Bird settles into his. After, inciting a Spielberg-level monorail chase that reaffirms Bird's lucid gift for kinetic and character-driven action filmmaking, the movie blasts off and never looks back. Stephanie Zakarek from Time considered it bold, and rapturously entertaining, while David Sims at The Atlantic dubbed it dazzling, thought-provoking, and sometimes overwhelming in terms of plotting. Variety's Owen Gleberman called the film fun, but far from incredible, and wrote, it's true that the Toy Story films, all three of which are fantastic, did variations on the same theme of a toy's obsolescence, but as movies they kept the emotions close to the surface. In Incredibles 2, we never get that rush of feeling. Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune gave the film 2.5 out of 4 stars and said, Incredibles 2 is content to punch the clock and stick to straight, bombastic action mode. In that mode, composer Giacchino's music is the most successful element. Running nimble, beautifully orchestrated variations on themes that feel familiar in the best ways while retaining their spark. The animation is bright and visually dynamic. The script, well, if the title were Satisfactories 2, it'd be about right. Ty Burr for the Boston Globe called it a clattery, unfocused affair that at times is more irritating than fun. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?